going to graph these uh, these values of x on a number line, which is should be a, a refresher. We should have done this in the past. Bridget, how does it look to graph these on a number line? What is a number line? What does it look like? Arrows. Has arrows on either end. Okay. Put a zero in the middle. this a point. All right. Uh, we can talk for a long time about points, but we won't. We will all get what a point is. It's like a dot. All right. So there we go. Uh, the number line for x equals 5, we put x uh, dot at 5. All right. Let's make another number line for x is negative 3. How are we going to do that? Put a zero. Put a zero. Can I put a zero over here? Yeah. Sure. Just to make a point. Why not? Of course you could. And then uh, how do we do three? To the left. Negative three. Three to the left. Yeah. And we put a point right there. All right. And one more. X is zero. Just put a zero. And just put a point right there. Okay. Good. Um, so. Uh, I was reading the other day, and you know, this number line idea was at one time this revolutionary idea that, uh, for instance, which is bigger, negative three or negative one? Negative one. Why is it bigger? Uh, closer to zero. Furthest to the right, okay. So that furthest to the right would work always, right? That would always be the rule you could follow to decide if something was, if one number was bigger than the other number, okay? So negative one is bigger. Now that wasn't always agreed upon. We didn't always agree at mathematicians that negative one was bigger than negative three, okay? And so this idea of a number line came up and we talked about as, you know, as mathematicians as a group decided, oh, you know, those people who think that negative one is bigger than negative three, you're right, it is bigger. That makes sense. Okay, so we came up with this number line idea. So um, it shows the, the relative uh, worth and size and magnitude of numbers compared to other numbers. Right? Okay. Um, do the same kind of an exercise just to see if you've got it. We'll just change this letter to y. Say y equals negative five and y equals two. So what should we graph? Those two on a number line. Oops. see a lot. Uh, actually, all, all I've seen so far are similar number lines, horizontal lines with arrows. Um, we have negative 5 to 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That's negative 5, put a point there. And for 2, put a 0 there, 1, 2, put a point at 2. Okay. That's good. All right. So we get the idea of a number line and, and how we graph it is on a number line. I'm on the line. And now I know that what we're going to talk about today is probably something you've heard of before and seen before, um, and you probably could get the homework done if I just let you do it. Uh, but I hope that you'll take this opportunity to look at this topic with with fresh perspective. Okay, maybe from my perspective, maybe get a, a different idea about what this thing is that we call. 
the coordinate plane, graphing and coordinates and quadrants and all that kind of stuff. Okay. Why we even have this coordinate thing, this x, y plane um, that we do. Okay. Um, so when you only have one variable, okay, and x is equal to 5, x is equal to negative 3, x is 0, um, these could be the result of having solved an equation where x is a variable. You solve it and find out that x is equal to, negative to 5, and you can graph that result. You can find that x is negative 3, graph that result. Okay. But what we run into um, now, by now I mean just in the history of this class right now, or you can imagine in the history of mathematics somewhere in the past. Um, let's say that you had an equation like x plus y equals negative 1. So where before, like maybe uh, x equals 5 was a solution to um, 3x equals 15. And we solve for x, we divide by 3 on both sides, we find that x is equal to 5, right? That's right there. And so we graph that answer, that solution. There, x is equal to 5, and we could graph that solution. But if we have an equation like x plus y equals negative 1, what about the solution to that equation? Say about that. It's going to be really valuable in the class if, if people will offer any kind of feedback. Maybe while you're thinking, I'm going to go back here and remind you of the very specific, important definition of the word solution. Why is 5 a solution to this equation? Because if I take 5 and put it back into this equation, 3 times 5 is 15. Right? So a solution is a number that you can put back into the original equation and it makes it true. Right? And both, both sides are equal. Okay. So, hope you've been thinking about this. What about the solution to this equation? the solution be? Like not specifically what would it be, but let's say we had a solution, how would we know we found a solution? How do we know that 5 was the solution to this first equation? How do you know that 5 is the correct solution? Well, yeah, 15 divided by 3 is 5. But the, and that sounds like the same thing I'm about to say. The real truth is if I put 5 back into the equation, put it right back into the equation, 3 times 5 is 15. Okay. Uh, let's look at x is uh, negative 3. Let's see. Um, 4 times x um, plus. Find the solution to this equation? equals negative 12, if we subtract 5 from both sides, divide 4 on both sides, we get x is negative 3. Now again, same question I've been asking, how do we know that x is equals negative 3 is the solution to this equation? Because if... If you substitute negative 3 for x, 
then this equation becomes true. Four times negative three is negative 12 plus five will be negative seven, and the equation will be true. Can you write here? Right, right, right. Right behind Rob. We know it's the solution because if you put negative 3 into this equation for x, it's true. So come back to this equation. So that's the solution to this equation. Just reach out there and branch out. Say something that you are not maybe sure is correct or incorrect. Would x be 0 and y be negative 1? Okay. Does that work? Yeah. If x is 0 and y equals negative 1, is that a solution? <coughs> because if you... So you put 0 in for x and negative 1 in for y, 0 plus negative 1 is negative 1. Is that it? Is that the solution? No. No? Can we find another one? x could be 5 and y could be negative 6. Negative 6. Okay. Anybody think of another solution? How many solutions do you figure this equation has? Infinite, infinite, infinite number of, of solutions. So when we now introduce the idea of a uh, coordinate plane, one of the motivations behind it is there's so many solutions to this equation. How do we keep track of them all? Okay. Uh, one way is we keep, keep doing this. We can keep writing x is this, and y is that, x is this, y is that, x is this, y is that. Um, we can make this a little bit more uh, concise, take up less space, maybe if we did like a table. So we'll let x be these things and y be these things. Okay? This is a, a, a table like we've, we've done before when we were talking about functions. We would make tables uh, that represent functions as well. So now we can make this 0, negative 1, 5, negative 6, 7, negative 8. So there's another way that we can represent the solutions to this equation um, in less space. Use less ink, less paper. Okay. Um, another way would be the important thing about this is that we have to agree that, that there's an order to it. The first thing represents which one of these two? Represents x, and this one represents y. Okay, so the first one's x and the second one's y. So there's a, a third way. 5 comma negative 6 means x is 5 and y is negative 6. 7 comma negative 8 means uh, x is 7 and y is negative 8. <coughs> and this is called a uh, table. It's called ordered. We could go on listing these ordered pairs. This is probably like the, the smallest way we have so far. By smallest, I mean it takes the, less, the least amount of ink, the least amount of space. Okay. Um, so we could just keep listing these forever, but maybe there's a better way. Okay. And that better way is uh, this coordinate plane system that I'm sure you've seen before. And the reason why I had you graph these two different number lines, x is this, and uh, on this other page, y is this, is because all a graph 
or all, all the coordinate plane is, this x, y axis that you've seen before, is just two number lines. We've got an x number line. That works great if all we need to graph is that one value of x. And we have a y number line. That's great if all we have to do is graph y, but we have two things to graph. When x is this thing, y is this other thing. So we'll, we'll plot the x values along this axis, and then we'll put the y-axis perpendicular to that, and we'll keep track of the y's in the vertical direction. We've got two directions, two dimensions, and so we can plot two things, one versus the other. So this would be where x is. Which direction is this? How would you describe this direction? Positive. Positive. Positive is good. This direction? Negative. Negative. Okay, if we go up, what would you call that direction? Positive or negative? Positive. Positive. It seems pretty natural. And down would be negative. And those are our y values. So let's uh, graph some of these points. Um, x is 0, so we don't go. Uh, left or right, we just stay right at zero. It's not positive, it's not negative, it's zero. Okay? Now we don't put a point at zero. We put a point uh, at zero comma negative one, meaning that x is zero, and when x is zero, y is negative one. So there's our point zero, negative one. Five, negative six, we need to move to the right five. Two people five. And when x is five, y is negative six. One, two, three, four, five, six in the negative direction. going to walk around and see how you do. I want you to graph 7 on the negative. Eight. Okay, so if you want to graph 7, negative 8, x is 7, so it's 5, 6, 7. And when x is 7, then y is negative 8. So um, one, two, three, four are points A, B, C, and D. Um, so point A, uh, where are the coordinates of point A? Jada? Three, negative two. Three, negative two. Start in the x direction. X is always first in these ordered pairs. We move over to the right three. That's positive three. Okay, so x is three. When x is three for A, y is negative two. For point B? Yeah. Zero, negative one. Zero, negative one. Good. We don't go anywhere in the x direction. We go left or right. We go down one only. So we <coughs> don't go anywhere in the x direction, but we do go down one in the y direction. Okay, point C. Alexis? Four, four. 
four, four, we move to the right four, and up four, those are two positive things, positive four, positive four. Okay, and lastly, point D. Negative four, three. Negative four, three, we move to the left four, let's see, back to the left four, and up three, back to the left four, and up three, we put a point right there. Okay, so we get the basics of the coordinate plane. Um, So there's some some uh, stuff, some labels to put on here. We've already labeled this the x-axis and this the y-axis. Um, this is in the positive direction, this is the negative direction. Up is positive, down is negative. Right. Is anybody familiar with, what are the coordinates of, of this point right here? Zero. 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 Don't go anywhere in the X, don't go anywhere in the Y. This is a special name. Do you remember what the, have you ever heard the name of this point here as well? Over here. The origin. The origin is the name of this point. Alright. Now putting these two coordinate, uh, or these two number lines perpendicular to each other. Now um, we're, we're putting those, those uh, axes on a piece of paper, a flat thing. And a flat thing in math is called a plane, P-L-A-N-E. Okay. And you can see we've been giving coordinates to these points. We call it the coordinate plane. Coordinate plane. Putting those two uh, number lines like that on the coordinate plane divides the coordinate plane into four spaces, okay. and these four things are called quadrants. This is the first quadrant, um, probably because a lot of times in life the, val the values we're talking about are positive. Right? We move forward in time and we move forward in distance and we make positive money and a lot of things are in the positive direction. All right. Um, This is coordinate, or this is quadrant two, quadrant three, quadrant four. <coughs> okay, so we're going to move back to this page. Um, what quadrant is point J in? It's kind of straddling one and four. Right? If you're if you're in between one and four, you're not in one. You're out in four. You're right on what? What is point F on? X axis. It's the X axis. Okay. So you can be on the X axis. You can be on the Y axis. If you're on the X and the Y axis at the same time, you're at the origin. You can be in quadrant one, two, three, or four. Okay. So. If uh, a problem is asking you to describe its location at the top, like I said, the origin, x-axis, y-axis, uh, in one of the quadrants, that's what it wants to know. Okay. Um, just to give you a little more practice before we move on to the next section. Um, Take this equation. So before we get into this, I'm just going to remind you what a function is. Remember we're talking about functions? Raise your hand if you remember the word function. Anybody remember what a function is? What defines a function? Or what is part of a function? What does a function do? Say so you don't remember, but you look in 
the back of your book. That thing called an index. I think it's blue. One, two, three people doing that. Look up the word index or the word function. It'll tell you where it's mentioned. <coughs> back there and find. what it consists of. Okay. What's it consist of? Where are you at? Okay. What does a function consist of? Function is the thing that has inputs. Okay, remember inputs. Put things into functions. What, where do we typically put things into functions? Into the variables. Into the variables. Which variable is takes the input usually? X. X usually does take the input, right? So inputs typically will go in here. Okay. So all of the inputs, all possible inputs for a function, are called the domain. And where do outputs usually come from? Y. Usually Y gives you the outputs. Input and out from Y comes the output. Well, typically some put something in there for X and find out what would that cause Y to be. Okay. All of the outputs are called the range. So this D that I put here, this D stands for the domain of this function. I'm making the domain of this function be the numbers 0, 2, 4, and 6. Those are, that's the domain, right? So the domain is all of the inputs. So if this is the domain, how am I going to use these numbers in this function? Put in for x. Put in for x, right? The domain is the set of all the what? Inputs, and the inputs typically go in where? Yes. X, and the outputs come out of Y. So we'll put these guys, these set of all inputs, all of these are inputs. We'll put these inputs in for X, and find out what comes out of Y. Okay. Input and output, which is this give and take. So I'd like you to do just that. I just want you to take those inputs and find out what the outputs are. So, given that all these are the inputs, find each of these outputs for those given inputs. Okay. Um, so we'll start with zero. Put zero in for x. X is the thing that takes inputs. Our first input that we're going to use is zero. Uh, so we put in zero, we get 2y equals 12. And divide by 2 on both sides, y is 6. Okay. 
so let's see, we can we're gonna keep track of these results. So we could do like zero, six. Uh, then we'll do two, two y plus three times two equals 12. And that's two y plus six equals 12. Subtract six <coughs> on both sides, divide by two, and y is three. So x is two means that y would need to be three. So we'll number four, two y plus three times four equals 12. That's two y plus 12 equals 12. That's two y equals zero. Divide by two, y equals zero. So if x is four, y is zero. And the last one, two y plus three times uh, six. Subtract 18 of both sides, get negative 6, y equals negative 3. So the last one would be x is 6, y is negative 3. Um, so these numbers together, 0, 2, 4, 6, if we list them all out, 0, 2, 4, 6, what do we call that list of numbers? The domain. And if we list these, what do we call these? The range, okay? So that was the second part of, uh, of what Sarah read a while ago, there is a set of outputs called the range. So we can list the range as 6, 3, 0, and 1. Um, we can take these points. 0, 6. How do we plot 0, 6? Just up 6. Just up 6. Don't go to the left or right because x is 0 and x is a left or right thing. Just go up to 6. Up 6. There is 0, 6. To the right 2 and up 3. To the right 4 and don't go up at all. Just stay at 0. Um, to the right 6. Six and down three. Okay. <coughs> um, right. Any questions about that? If I tell you stuff that I want you to put into the function, can you tell me what comes out and then graph the results? What do you think? Any hand raises? tell you what the domain is, which means all the inputs, things I want you to put into the function, you should be able to figure out what comes out of the function, uh, and graph those things. Okay. So those are the, the basics of a graph, and, and what I just want to remind you of real quick, let's go back to the first time I drew the x-axis and y-axis together. The first time I drew the x-axis and y-axis together in one place is when we had an equation with an x and a y in it. Uh, how many solutions did we say this equation had? Infinite. Infinite. As many as <laughs> we want. Okay, so we can plug these in forever. We can find solutions forever and ever. As long as we take x plus y and the result is negative 1, we found a solution. Okay. Um, so one of the main reasons we even have this xy <laughs> axis system, this coordinate plane, is to graph solutions to equations. And that is it. That is the whole thing. That is everything about an xy axis. It's everything about the coordinate plane is graphing solutions to equations. Right? Um, and if you, if this, Connection isn't clear. That's what I was saying about today. We have the opportunity to maybe look at this from a new perspective. Okay. Uh, if you did get this, then great. If you didn't, 
you really should take the opportunity to internalize what a graph is. Okay. So any x and y that you can plug in here, and it makes the equation true, any x and y that you can plug in here that makes the equation true, what do we call that when you have that correct x and y? What's the word for that? So if you've got uh, an x and a y that make the equation true, like 0 and negative 1, that makes the equation true. Therefore, 0 comma negative 1, we could say oh, x is 0 and y is negative 1, however you want to say that, is a solution. 5 negative 6, that's a solution. 7 negative 8, that's a solution. And a graph is a way to use a picture graphically to keep track of all the solutions to all the equations that we run into. That's what graphs are. Uh, it's not so much here's an equation and here's how you graph that equation. It's not really even quite true. You don't graph an equation, you graph all the solutions from the equation. Okay. So I'll do less of here's, a, here's an equation and here's how you graph it. But I'll keep reminding you that what we're graphing are the solutions to the equation, all possible solutions to the equation. Reiterating that point, let's go back to this. The equation that uh, brought about these solutions was um, 2y plus 3x equals 12. Okay. So now we're, we're forgetting about this. We're going to let the domain become anything we want, anything you want to put in there. So if the domain is anything you want it to be, Anyone think of a, uh, a solution to this equation? I'm just doing something on the calendar. All right. um, can you think of any other solutions that you know <coughs> on this graph? Any other solutions besides these ones? Nine and y two. X is nine, and y is two. Well, four. I mean, but at, but as in. So x is. Yeah. X is nine. And, uh, and how did you come about that? Well, I think I kind of. Well, I think I kind of meant for a week. That's how I make it come out. You, you what? You meant what? I kind of meant, <coughs> sorry, my folk. <coughs> sorry? I meant it as 3 e, and 2. X is 3? Yeah. X is 3. Oh, so what you meant was for this to be 9. Yes. Okay, so for that to be 9, X would be 3. Okay. So John says this is a solution. How do we test it and make sure this is a solution or prove that it's not a solution? Courtney, how do we show if this is a solution? Uh -huh. And we can't just do that, right? You, and then, what are you looking for if it is a solution? What will happen? The what? That'll equal twelve, right? The other side is twelve, and so when you put in uh, the values of x and y, you should come out on the left side with twelve. Okay. So three times three is nine. Two times two is four. So, do you, is that a solution? No, not quite. Um, let's see. Let's just change one of these. Let's change. Um, let's change y. Let's say x is three. Then what would y be? this one just a second. If x was 3, if x was 3, then what would y have to be? Well, 2y plus 3 times 3 is 12. 
5 uh, plus 9 equals 12, 2y equals 3, and the y equals 3 halves. Is that valid? Could that be a solution? 3 comma 3 halves? Why is that valid? What's your argument for that being an okay solution? In fact, the only thing you can plug in for y is three halves. Yeah. You'd have to do nine plus three. The only way to get this to be three is to multiply by three over two. We know that when we multiply three over two by two, the twos cancel, and we're left with three. So we get nine plus three is twelve. Okay. So our solutions, they don't have to be these nice uh, round numbers, these integer values. So you go three, and how much is three half? One and a half. One and a half, so up one and a half. Okay. Richard, you said you had another solution? What'd you have? <coughs> uh, the x root eight. X is eight. X is 8 and Y is negative 6. Yeah. Negative 6. Can we test Bridger's solution? See if it is a solution? How do we do it? <coughs> plug it in for X and Y. Plug in uh, 8 for X and negative 6 for Y. Okay. Let's, let's, see, let's not do that. Let's, let's um, not do the, the math, right? the arithmetic. How about if we look at this graph? Does it look like there's a pattern yeah. in where the points are rounded? What pattern would you say that is? Downhill? Downhill, Downhill. Downhill okay. Downhill, like um, maybe what kind of shape is being made? If we were to graph all these solutions, what kind of shape do you think is being made? Triangle. Triangle. <laughs> I just mean if we were to, if we were to keep graphing these points that, that represent solutions to that equation. We've got so many of them, they started to mush together and, and get really close together. What kind of a shape do you think you would have in red in there? Maybe the answer is too easy. A line, right? A line is a shape. And I think that's the thing that A line is a shape, okay? So um, a line would be created. So let's look at this solution of eight, negative six. If we were to follow this pattern that we're seeing these points uh, follow, um, well, here is eight, x is eight. How would you use this pattern to help you decide if negative six was the y value that you got? In line with the rest of the dots. So here we have a point and a point. Definitely there's a line between those two points. There's a line between any of these two points. If we continue that line, though, it seems like yeah, it goes right through there and through there and through there. Where would that take us if we keep following that? How can, like, how do we stay on that line to get to the next point? to go through 8, negative 6? Is that point going to go through 8, negative 6? I feel like it's going to. Can you, like, if I'm a skeptic and I'm skeptical of that, can you convince me that that's yes, definitely going to go through 8, negative 6? How can you convince me of that? Because sometimes you put together, it doesn't have to be really elaborate and amazing. Thoughtful and has good reasoning. This is why I know it's going to go through eight negative six.
down three, there's a lower point. Uh -huh. Over two is down three, there's a lower point. Uh -huh. Over two is down three, and over three is down three. Okay, this seems to be like a fundamental property of a line, is that you can go over and down and get to not the next point, but another point, right? And why I say that is because if we come here, you can go over two and down three and get to this point, but you can also go over one and down one and a half and get to this point. Right? We can go over a half and go down well, some other amount and get to another point. Right? So not, not necessarily the next point, but another point. Okay? Does that sound good? Does that sound like a good argument from Sarah that you go over two and down three, just like you have been doing to get from one point to another point, uh, and eight negative six happens to be right there. Pretty convincing, right? <coughs> Do you like candy? Mm -hmm. Do you like candy? Yeah. Yeah. Why not? Before that beautiful, beautiful argument. Uh, we're seeing this pattern that a line just makes like the step motion down and eight negative six lands right there. So the argument consists of it seems to be that this, if we were to connect all these points, we would get a line, and 8, negative 6 is a point on that line. And any other point that happens to be on that line, right, we're just kind of trusting that this pattern would continue, any point on this line like um, this one, where is that point? Just pick the point off that line. Can you kind of make a guess as to where the coordinates of that point are? How about the x value at least? Seven. Looks like seven. Six. And well, six is right there. Seven. Okay. Seven comma four and a half. Four and a half? Negative. Negative. It's negative. One, two, three, four. It looks like a half. Right? So negative. Uh, instead of calling it four and a half, okay, this is my argument for not mixed numbers, but improper fractions. Like always improper fractions are the most useful. Okay, we got one, two halves, four, six, eight, nine halves. Nine halves. Right. So here's a, a big, like a big moment right now. Okay, we just picked, we just drew a line. We drew that line. We connected those points. We picked the point on that line. What's the relationship between this point, seven comma the negative half, negative nine half? this point and this equation. between that and that equation there. So 
says where? Here. Okay. Go down four. Four. And a half. This one? And down four and a half. This is when I go down four and a half, where am I getting? You said go start here and go down four and a half? Yeah. And I'm here now? So what's what's the significance of being right here? To here? Okay, there's a point there, okay, okay. Uh, we go down four and a half here, and we can find another point there. We go down four and a half here. Um, and we're definitely noticing patterns within the line, like how much you move vertically and how much you move horizontally. Um, what though is the connection between this point, the, the x and y value of this point, and this equation? The equation. At least three answers. John? Uh, <coughs> M. M. Why in a situation would equal <coughs> M? M. Can you move over a bit? Sorry? Oh, no worries. Would equal 9, lying and and add to equal 21. Uh, I make it say, wait, yeah, I make it say, I see what you're saying. Four and a half, and, you know, it's supposed to be four and a half, half, well, negative four and a half, whatever. Uh -huh. So, if y is negative four and a half? Because negative nine, nine plus 21 equals 12. Okay, so, yes. That's the significance. What's that? That's the significance of it. The significance of it is if y is negative nine halves, and x is 7, okay? So then let me show you what John's saying here. If y is negative 9 halves and x is 7, then, well, this is 2 over 1. What, what, what happens when you multiply negative 9 halves times 2 over 1? Yeah, because the twos, right? Two divided by two is one, so now we're left with negative nine plus three times seven is twenty-one. And is that equal to twelve? Yeah. It is. Okay. So. John. Uh, no, I'm not going to take it. Okay. Well, maybe something else. Okay. The significance of this point is that if you put this in for x and this for y. It makes the equation true. When we have a value of x and a value of y that we plug into the equation and it's true, what do we call that? X and y. The solution. Okay. What if I were to pick this point? Which is hard to tell what the coordinates are exactly, right? But if I knew the coordinates of it, what would be the significance of those coordinates? They would equal 12. If you put that x and that y in here, whatever comes out on this side would add up to 12. And this point here, same thing. Right? We're finding x and y values on this line that when you plug them in, you get a true equation, a true statement. Okay. What's that word again? For when you find that x and that y that's, that makes the equation true? Solution. Okay, so all the points on this line. Actually, you know what the, the truth is. This isn't even really a line. Okay, it's really like an infinite number of points right next to each other. <coughs> that we don't take the time to plot all of these points. We just notice a pattern that we seem to be going over two and down three, 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 and we can just keep that pattern going forever and ever and ever and keep finding solutions. And not just big steps of over two and down three, but we could go over half as much, over one, and go down one and a half, half as much <coughs> as three. And that same ratio of over to down should be the same. It should take us from one point to another point, which is a solution to that equation. Okay. So, uh, a graph. First of all, this red thing is a graph. Every
everything else here is just called the coordinate plane. Okay. This thing, this x, this x and y, that's not a graph. Okay. You might have graph paper that has these grid lines. That's not graph. A graph is the actual thing that you draw, a line or a curve or something like that. Okay. So this is the graph. The graph of an equation. This is the graph of that equation. And the connection between the graph and the equation is that the graph of an equation, and let's say the graph, not a graph, um, is the picture of all the equations solutions. We could write down all the solutions, like we could just write x is this and y is this, and then do it again, x is this and y is this, and then write it again, x is this, y is this, you can make a table. We could write uh, ordered pairs, right? Here's some ordered pairs. These are all solutions to this equation. Or <coughs> we could draw a picture, okay? And a picture is nice because it, uh, it gives us lots of solutions. It gives us an idea of <coughs> the behavior of this graph, what kinds of outputs we're going to seem to be getting for each particular input. Okay. Um, so a graph of an equation is a picture of all the equations of solutions. Right. So let's um, do another example and make this a little more complicated. to uh, draw the graph of this equation. So what is the graph? We just defined the graph. What is the graph? When we get done drawing the graph, we're going to have all these points, and all these points are going to have a, a particular important significance to this equation. Take a point off that graph. What's that? Uh, yes, then any point you pick, the x and the y, when you plug them in for x and y there, they will equal 3. You know they have to because the other side is 3. That's exactly right. right. Any point that's on the graph we're about to draw will be a solution to that equation. All right. um, does this equation look simil similar to this equation? So you get a number times x plus something times y equals a number. Okay. So what kind of a shape do you think this graph What shape does this graph have? What shape did you say? A line. A line shape? Okay. Did you think that this probably has a line shape? Okay, probably. How can we see what kind of a shape this graph will be? Are two numbers on both, or x and y? Yes. Thank you. Right. It's a very good answer. Find two numbers that can go in for x and y. All right. Now, that might seem kind of hard. Maybe you're thinking i got to guess the two right numbers. But you could just guess for one of them and then figure out what the other one, other one would have to be. Right? So anybody, just give me, give me a solution to this equation. X is 7 and y is 2. Okay. Can we get some agreement on that? Maybe three other nodding heads? Okay, so that, that's a solution. So x is 7, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and y is 2. We're kind of speculating that the graph of this one will be a line as well. Um, if we're not sure, though, we should you know, graph a few points and see if it, if it works out. Can someone give me another solution that hopefully fits in this graph? 5 and 1. Five and one. 
have agreement there, five and one? Okay. One, two, three, four, five, and one. Okay. Of course it looks like a line right now because we only have two points and a line can be drawn between any two points. Let's get maybe one or two more solutions and see if that's a pattern we're observing. Another solution? John? Nine, nine, nine is x and three is y. Nine is x and three is y. That uh, is a line, kind of follows that stepping pattern that Sarah noticed earlier. How about another solution, maybe a solution that's over here somewhere? How about a solution that has a negative in there? One of the, one of the numbers is negative. John? Uh, X is one, I mean, Y is negative one. X is 1 and Y is negative 1. That means X is 1 minus 2 times negative 1. 2 times negative 1 is uh, negative 2. So you subtract negative 2, 2 plus 1 is 3. So 1, negative 1. Great. Richard, did you have one? No? Uh, so if we were to follow this pattern, what do you think? Would a point go right here? Over two down one, over two down one, over two down one. What's that point? What's the coordinates of that point? Bridget? Um, three, positive three, negative one. Three, negative one? Yeah. Wait, no. Zero. Zero, yeah. Y is nothing. There is no Y value. That seems to follow this pattern in the picture. Does it work in the equation? 3 comma 0, x is 3, y is 0. Yeah, that works too. If x is 3 and y is 0, we got 3 minus 0 is 3. So we could, now we could like follow this pattern and find more solutions without even having to do any math. Right? We could just go over 2 and down 1. What are the coordinates of that point? Negative one, negative two. Plug those in. Negative one minus two times negative two. Seems to be what we're being told here. Negative one plus four, that is three. Follow that pattern here. That's negative three, negative three. Plug that in, we'll find that's a solution. How about um, if we go to four? And where do you think that would put us right there? Between here and there. Or comma, what's your guess on what that y value is? One half. One half? Okay. Let's try that out. Uh, four minus two times one half. Uh, that's four minus one half times two. What's one half times two? One half times two is right, two over one. So you get two over two, that's one. <coughs> that works too. And it would work for this guy right here, which I'm guessing is uh, um, one, two, three, four and a half and uh, three quarters. That's exactly what we got. Uh, any point that follows this pattern fits along this line. I'm going to have you finish that. Any point that is on that line is a solution. Is a solution to that equation. Whatever equation you derive this, this shape from, the shape of a line. All the points that we've found uh, by hand, this one, this one, this one, and this one, all of those are solutions. They seem to fit this pattern of a line shape. And every other point that we found that would be on that line also is a solution to that equation. Fantastic. I'm going to keep drawing this line, I just keep following that pattern. <coughs> so our, 
our suspicion was correct. That was also a line. When we graph all the solutions to that equation, we also got a line. And if you can write an equation, a number times x plus a number, some other number, times y equals some constant, then what do you think the shape of that graph will be? graph is a line. Uh, okay, that's why we call this a linear equation. So, have you guys done some graphing before like this? What I hope is that you knew this already. Of course a graph is, like all the points on this graph are solutions to the equation. I knew that. You're just telling me stuff I already knew. Uh, if you didn't know that, I hope you know that now. That's some information that you didn't have before. Because that is the most significant thing about an equation and its graph. The graph is simply all the solutions to that equation. And Almost guaranteed, graphing is the least favorite subject of every algebra student. Okay? I'm not even going to know that. It was mine. I didn't like graphing. I didn't like solving equations. That was fine. And then graphing, it, there was a huge disconnect there. I know that if I had known that the graph is a solution, is a, is a picture of all of the solutions, I would have been a lot happier. Okay? So let's do one more, and now we'll take what we've noticed is a pattern, a pattern of these kinds of equations giving us lines as graphs and making graphing as easy as possible. Okay. Uh, and then I'll give you your homework at the end of the day. Um, number 15 and 14. is this going to make? What kind of a shape is it going to be? A line shape. Okay? A line. A very simple shape. We want to now make this as simple as possible to draw the graph of you know, all the solutions to this equation. So you know it's going to be a line. What the, what's the minimum amount of information you need to draw a line? Four points. Is that the minimum amount that we need? Four points? Can we do f with, with fewer points? Two points? Is that the minimum? Is it too much? Is it too little? Can we draw a line given just one point? We wouldn't know if we were right, so to make sure that we've got the right line, we need a second point. And that way, that's it. That is the minimum amount of information we need, two points. Okay. So as we're starting out just graphing these linear equations, just find a couple of points. Okay. And then as we move along, I will help you find the easiest two points to find. So but together, let's work on this one. Let's find two points. And if you think you have a really easy way to find a point, then knock right up there. But if you have if you just have a point, Put it out there, we'll put it up here, and we'll be on our way. So do you have a point? Do you have a solution to this equation? 
x negative 2, y negative 1. Okay, let's just check this one out because this is kind of a, this is a larger number. So 2 times negative 1 minus 6 times negative 2, negative 2 plus 12 is 10. Okay, so it is a solution because this left side came out to be 10 like it needed to. So negative 2, negative 1. Okay, as Alexis said, we could draw a line through that point, but who knows? There's only one line that's the right line. Draw an infinite number of lines through this one point. So we need that second point to, to guide us along and tell us where we need to go. So, another point? X is zero and Y is five. So if X were zero, that would just go away. So yeah, we divide both sides by two and that's five. That was pretty easy to find. Zero, one, two, three, five. And any other points that we find are just going to be kind of redundant because they're all going to be either in between these two on a line, or they're going to be just an extension of the line that would go through those two points. So if you want to graph one of these linear equations, find any two points. Right? A point is really, so here's the parenthetical statement here, solutions, <coughs> and connect. Any two points will do. And now that we've drawn the line, we can see it looks like negative 1, positive 2, x is negative 1 and y is 2, it looks like that's a solution to the Thank <laughs> you.